Wiebe Draaier, Chairman of the Executive Board of Rabobank. I was just wondering, do you have any Bitcoins or Ethers yourself? I have. Yeah? Yeah, but purely for entertainment purposes. Ah, <laughs> but when did you buy them? Uh, I bought them a week ago. Oh, really? And then Ether or Bitcoin? Both. Okay, that's interesting. Because actually the, the route to Ether is via Bitcoin in my case. So uh, you have to do the one and then you do the other. So yeah. you leave a little bit of Bitcoins behind and you do the Ether on the other side. Okay. But literally, I, I only do it to see what is it. And, uh, and I think the um, in the conference, Vincent Evers invites everybody to share. And I got them because somebody shared. And so my encouragement would be, let's share and let's see. So what I'm doing is I'm also passing it on to my kids and say, try this, see what happens. Oh. Tell me what you think. How old are your kids? My youngest is 16 and my oldest is 23. Okay. And so now they have Bitcoin as well or Ether? Not yet. Okay. But I love the invitation that Vincent gave is when you get it, give it. Okay. It's a good idea. So a few years ago, quite a lot of bankers were a bit wary, right? About Bitcoin and uh, other cryptocurrencies. When was the moment when you thought, well, there's more to it than meets the eye? Well, I think that's a, that is a gradual process. When you think about the payment side of it, or the actual uh, currency side of it, I think the hesitation was the biggest at the early stage. But when I started two and a half years ago with Rao Bank, I made a tour through, um, through California and went to see the frontier of banking, the, the, the whole in the fintech space, spoke to Ripple, Ripple is one of the leading players on the payment mm -hmm. side. And so at that point in time, we started an initiative together with Ripple, where we actually did apply a use case. But so there you had the, the dilemma of on the one hand, you say, well, this can't be true. It's the fundament of paying. And it, but at the same time, you're stepping forward to see how could this, how could this work? Yeah. That was very early. And right now, the, the application is used much more to the whole document space and the identity space, which is much more real and concrete. And we're all in it. So. I think it's a gradual migration of understanding and a gradual migration of adoption. And there's also a gradual shift of application of the Bitcoin thinking towards, from originally payments towards more identity and, and, and document handling. So. Yeah, because there are a lot of you know, blockchain applications, right? You just said it, it's payments, it's uh, ownership. It's yeah. uh, What, what application is most interesting to you? Oh, I think it's not, there's not a single one that's more, there are like a gazillion around and we are actively engaged as Rabobank in, in nearly a hundred uh, potential and now almost 40 real. But they're all in the, let's try this case. And, and they're very small and they're interesting and they're very big and they're interesting. Uh, but we have one now that goes live mm -hmm. into production where we make, it's not just a theoretical concept, not tried with one client. No, we have a consortium of seven banks across Europe and we're moving into the place where we're going into production and this this year it will be operational when real clients can use it as a way to export to outside. Real Rabobank clients will work with this? Not only Rabobank clients, this is an open platform, but Rabobank is the Dutch partner in that network. Yeah. And then their clients are, are banks in uh, seven countries in Europe. And we connect those clients on their cross-border transactions. But the idea is that other banks would join. This is not proprietary, it's open. But it's an experiment that goes beyond experimentation into production, and it's for real. And how does it work exactly? If I were a client, how would you explain So it you to are me? a small and medium-sized entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You have a new business, and you want to go abroad. Mm -hmm. And when the first time you go abroad, you have this phase of uncertainty. You don't know your counterpart. You have a contract, but hey, will he pay? Will she pay? Will the goods be arrived? Is it a trustworthy counterpart? And then you can, you can get an insurance, but that's costly. Or you can take a leap of faith, like let's try this and see what happens, but you run a risk. What this, this cross-border transaction tool does, it, it offers you certainty. The, so the, the banks in the network offer that certainty. Their clients are clients of the bank. The banks connect via this platform and we give you the certainty that the counterpart is real. Yeah. And we offer you the service that if your first shipment abroad is on the way, you get paid when it arrives. If it arrives, you get paid. So the whole document handling and the certainty part of it is now arranged. It's a very hands-on uh, tool for newly beginning exporting uh, SME companies. And it's a real need, it's a real uh, hassle, and it's life. Yeah, and how does this, 
can Rabobank make money with this service? Or is that still... Well, not with the service per se. Hmm. But we want to serve our clients and it's, and it's their need. So we start with that need and then you build the infrastructure. But when you have the client in your, in your network, they will do other things. They will need financing, they will need insurance, they will need... So you, I think it's more of a client retainer than it is a client money maker, if you will. And that's, that's how I look at the whole blockchain development. It's, it's an infrastructure that enables commerce to happen. Yeah. And we live off the relationship with our clients and the commerce it brings but we need to expand into a new infrastructure. And this is about uh, small uh, companies, uh, yes. enterprises. Will there be a project with uh, consumers? Like oh, we me have, uh, oh, we have, uh, I think we've done about 40 user cases, and I think half of them are in the space of private individuals. Yeah. And one nice example that I think is, is cool is um, we've, we've tried one where we we're going to move to a circular world where where uh, you want to not own the washing machine, but you want to pay for its use. And so we created an application that where you can, when you, every time you run a washing round, that's the point in time when a transaction takes place and from the bank account of the washing machine to the owner of the washing machine who says, now you have used the washing machine and now your now transaction takes so place. Paper wash. It's a paper wash yeah. application. This is a very, a very domestic, personal application, and we've tried like 10 more of those. You know that the need will be there. We are moving to a circular economy. We have laid the foundation, but the real need needs to evolve. Yeah, and so, because it's not really there When yet. you and I start to own, not own washing machines, but only pay for its use, when we actually do it, will this application go off? But the technology is now available. But projects for the consumers, for Dutch consumers, are still a little bit in pilot experimenting they're all, they're, phase. Yeah, they're right? all in experimenting. So they're, they're, it's called proof of concept, as you know. Mm -hmm. And we've tried 40 of those proof of concept applications. They are they are proven, they work. Yeah. So it really hinges on, will the demand take up? Do we actually have confidence that the demand is real? When you build the infrastructure, will the demand start? and will the players in the network commit? And so you have two dimensions of uncertainty. One is, will the demand pick up, yeah. consumers? And will the network of, of providers step into this platform and adopt it? And of those 40 projects, uh, at least a few will, of course, scale up in the, in the future, right? That's our intent. Yeah. And do we have got one where we actually do it. And I understand from the conference, we're the first. There's nobody else steps into the production phase. That's cool, Yeah. but it's real. Okay, and for the consumer, the project for the consumer, when will you think the scale-up will be, like in a few years or...? I, I'm not an expert on that prediction. I, I, when I come here and I, I listen to all the, uh, the a little bit hyped predictions of this will change the world, I think, uh, let me say this, there was a quote by, uh, by, the, by one of the famous gurus who said the short-term impact is overstated and yeah. the longer term is understated, I'm in that camp. This will happen, and I'm I'm in the camp. This will fundamentally alter the way we register, the way we do ownership, the way we do give shape to the circular economy. But the timing is the uncertain part, and I love it to start because it's a new world and we embrace it. But it's impossible to predict when it will really be scaling. Up. Yeah, that's of course a very positive outlook, and I hear a lot of uh, uh, bank CEOs or. Uh, uh, you're uh, chairman of the board, right? I can't call you CEO. Um, uh, very positive, you know, yeah. there's challenges and innovation and FinTech, but uh, this FinTech or this tech revolution is, can also be quite painful. You know, because of technology, a lot of bankers are losing their jobs. Yeah. Do you see that danger with blockchain as well? That it can cost well, jobs? Yeah. It will cost jobs uh, because most of the hassle that our clients face are related to things that require manual work and have the risk of failure and have uh, take multiple steps and multiple parties and blockchain has the opportunity to short circuit much of that administrative work yeah that will give a lot of uh, opportunity but also painful process of loss of jobs but it's not i mean that if you were to take the opposite point of view so let's not embrace this because it costs jobs that's the wrong view on, on progress. We need to find a good way that these people can find new roles, new jobs, new new development. And we need to serve our clients because that's what we're here for in a better way. So it's inevitable. Wie bedrijer, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.